Hi, I'm Alvin, and this session is on the importance of mentorship. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. I want you to get a notebook, paper, pen, um, pause it after I ask the question so you can think, but do whatever you need to do to really get into the, really get into this session. So first question, who do you have a great relationship with? How do they make you feel? Do they challenge you? Do they encourage you? Do they champion you when you're not around? So hopefully you have one to two people in your head that you have a quality relationship with, and now it's time to dig a little deeper and try to understand what qualities make these relationships so valuable. So I think you have about 10 to 20 seconds to list the qualities that actually make it valuable. Go. Who loves science? Anyone? Nah, me neither. But there's generally a science to a good mentorship relationship, so welcome to my science class. And our anchor formula for today is R equals M tall plus MT, all divided by accountability. Let me say that one more time. R equals M tall plus MT, all divided by accountability. So I'm gonna break down the formula so you truly, truly understand what I'm saying. So it's just not gibberish. Um, so stay with me. So let's look at mentor first. A good mentor will have relevant expertise. They give willingly. They give really, really good feedback. Um, feedback that doesn't hurt me, but it challenges me constructively. Um, they listen to my problems. They're empathetic to my problems. So not only do they listen, but they try to understand me and they're respectful. So now we're going to look at MT. A good mentee will have initiative, there'll be a doer, there'll be clear expectations. You'll know what you want from the beginning and you're gonna work actively to get it. You're always gonna be honest. No lying in this relationship because that just means there's no accountability. You're gonna embrace challenge. Your mentor isn't gonna have the same limits that you'll have for yourself. They're gonna push you to your uncomfortable and you're just gonna have to embrace it. And you've gotta be respectful. Be on time, be there, be present every single time. And then all divided by accountability. So mutual accountability is the bedrock of mentorship. You must check in often. You've got to measure the progress and you've got to share your observations. Is it working? And when it isn't, tell them. So there's multiple forms of mentorship, including but not limited to peer mentorship. So that might be someone, you and your friend, you guys can mentor each other. There's traditional mentorship, me and my boss. There's reverse mentorship, me mentoring my boss. And there's group mentoring, where a group of you come together to share learnings and to coach each other. But the differences are slight and are still reliant on our anchor formula. So today we're going to focus on traditional mentorship. Really, really simple stuff. So traditional mentorship has time frames, clear objectives. It's vertically aligned, so your mentor probably will be more senior than you in a career you want to get into. But what's really interesting is that you're in charge. You're in charge of making it happen, scheduling the meetings, sharing your work and your life updates, being honest, being transparent and being present. Um, and that's a lot of work. But you can do it, not too much work. So I hope this formula makes sense. Please write it down, study it and apply it. Say it. I hope you said it at home um, because it's worked for me and I'm sure it really worked for you. I've had my mental Kia for about three years and he's so valuable because he's seen me fall at the same hurdles time and time again and he helps me over them with little judgment and so much understanding. So like, I didn't want to go to lectures. He tells me I need to go to lectures. I don't want to do my assignments. He tells me I need to do my assignments and eventually I just graduated. Um, and I think that was largely due to him. And I think the qualities that make our relationship so fruitful are his empathy and his clear communication. He helps me understand why I need to go to the lectures, why I need to do the assignments. Um, Earlier today, we caught up with Tiny um, to have a conversation on mentorship. Today, we're looking at the importance of mentorship. So first question, proper simple, do you have a mentor? And if so, how did you get him or her? Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't say that there's anyone officially that's like my main mentor, but in terms of basically anyone that's older than me yeah. that kind of has experience, whether they're successful or not, is kind of my mentor. That, that I choose to be around, not just a random person on the street, but all of the people that are older than me, and it's kind of been like that. Like, I think mentors are very, very important, but I would say, coming from the environment that I came from, 
anyone who's older than me. So whether it be my manager, whether it be my engineer, whether it be my mum, whether it be like another artist, you know, like I would always just try my best. And, and in my mind, even if they didn't think they were mentoring me, I would take mentorship from them with every conversation. So I'd be asking them the right questions and all them kind of things. Just that, like, always being open to learn, because you never... Yeah, that's it, you got it in a nutshell, just always being open to learn. And obviously now I'm in a position where I mentor people. So some of those people you might know, like a Jeremiah Emmanuel. It was actually mad, because <clears throat> when I was driving here, I was driving through Campbell on New, New Road, yeah? And I saw a big billboard of yeah, his yeah, face. Yeah, I've seen that. You've yeah, seen yeah, it, yeah. yeah? Big up Jeremiah. Big up that. Jeremiah. Yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. like, life is mad, bro. Life is crazy. Like, and that guy is just flying and he'll continue to fly. But yeah, now I try my best to be um, a mentor for as many like young people as I can. And obviously he is one of those people. Um, but yeah, at the time, I wouldn't say there was anyone officially, but just everyone older than me, basically. Yeah. And then around mentorship, do you think vulnerability is important? So around the people that you're trying to like learn from, do you think it was important for you to be vulnerable to them and the people you're mentoring now, like, are they vulnerable to you? Do you create that space for them? That's a great question. Um, someone said, um, you know, like the teacher was once a student at the beginning, yeah? And so in my mind, that always means you, have, you had to be vulnerable at one stage. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Like, Every expert, they weren't always an expert. Every professional, there was a time where they were a beginner or they were a novice. And so I've never had, maybe like on the outside world, maybe, but within my close circle and stuff, and you can ask them all, like in terms of like seeking information and knowledge, like I've never had an ego. Like I've always been the most open, vulnerable, like maybe even too much to a fault even, do you get what I mean? But I've been so keen on learning and, and, and I've accepted that I didn't know everything, do you get what I mean? And no one knows everything. That yeah, I was, I've been very, very vulnerable in me trying to attain information and to further develop myself. For sure, because you need to get what you can when you can. Yeah. And what's the best advice that you think you've been given by, I guess, someone that you consider a mentor? Again, like J Lo, that's what I'm saying. I met her like a couple of times, but then like the Jennifer one, Lopez. Yeah, but okay, then the yeah. one, but then the Mad. one time, me and my manager went to her house um, just to talk about like a record and stuff like that. And then that's what I'm saying. Like she's not my mentor, but at the time, I could ask her a million different things. So I asked her what you asked me, and I was like, "What's the best bit of advice that anyone's ever given you?" And then she told me a story of when you know, the, the Diddy and J-Lo days and all them kind of things. And, and she, the, the two things that she said is that um, she, she made a record and that basically she loved the record so much and then everyone else came in and they, they didn't like the song. And she was like, yeah, but I like it. That's what I want to like, put out. Yeah. And then it was either Diddy or someone was like, yeah, but you're not making the music for you. You're making the music for people yeah. to enjoy. So if you want to release it, like people need to like it, do you get what I mean? Because if you just want to make it for yourself, you can do it in your house, in your shower, all day long. So then that really resonated with me. And then the second thing was just no complaining. And um, maybe it's because I'm in a quite good situation, but I wake up every day thinking, like for as long as I'm alive, why, why do I have a reason to complain? Do you get what I mean? There's always someone in a worse or off situation. There's this boy that I was just um, posting a, um, about on Instagram today. He's 13. He's in Nigeria. He just did a bit of blasphemy. I don't know what he said, but now he's in prison. Do you get what I mean? And he's 13. So when I wake up sometimes and I'm in my house and I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm like, you know what? Like, just, you just can't ever complain. Like, in life, there's going to be ups, they'll be down, they'll be rough, they'll be smooth. But you know, just embrace the fact that you're alive. You're one of those, you know, the cell, the sperm that fertilized the egg and all that. You were the one, you're the guy that made it. Do you get what I mean? And so just try and thrive while you're here. And then the rest is down to God, innit? Do you get what I mean? 100%. Hey, big up J-Lo for the advice. Last question. Yeah, this big up J-Lo, man. <laughs> this was a little cheeky, but yeah, mm. if you are looking for mentees, I'm available. So obviously, can you be my mentor? Yeah. Hey, just done. like that. <laughs> yeah, just done. Like just like that. Of course, man. Right. Of course. I'll hit you up. Thank you for um, taking the time out to do this interview, man. No worries, bro. All good. Here is a four-point practical plan to get the mentor you're looking for. Step one, know your goals and what you want. Know what you want the mentor to help you achieve. Know who you look up to, 
know what they've done and the things they have done to get there, do the research. Remember I said that you have to be in charge. You gotta really, really, really do the legwork. Point two, have your elevator pitch ready. How are you gonna approach this person? What do you wanna say? Make sure you have some similarities with this person and tell them what you like about them and their work. So point three, begin the search. Search on social media, create a list of people you would like to mentor you, that you'd like to ask, and just start to approach them. Approach them via email, DM, and look for mentorship programs. Like, there are so many, so spend the time really finding a program that works for you. Point four, once you have your mentor and you're maintaining that relationship, you can start to build new ones. One person can't help you with it all, so consider getting a board of mentors. Ha, you thought the science lesson was over? Not just yet. Have a look at my version of the periodic table. You had a look. So we have ST for Stormzy, LB for your local businessman, SIS for your sister, OP for Oprah. These are people that might be in your network, might not. But I think these are all people that can influence you daily and could potentially be your mentor, whether you know them or not. So what I need you to do for me is just fill out the rest. Fill out the rest with the people that influence you on a day-to-day. It might be your postman, it might be the businessman, it might be Stormzy. Stormzy does it for me, but might not do it for you. Um, so cross out, cross out whatever you need to do. Print this out, fill it out, because I think it would be super useful. Have a look at this slide. Here are all the main stages, the short sets and the booths that you could go to. So check out the website, apprenticenation.co.uk. Also, you should look at the personal branding short set and how to set yourself up for success short set. Those ones are ones that I'd recommend. Lastly, if you want the opportunity, to actually get a mentor from Apprentice Nation, then I think do as many main stages, short sets as possible, because one of the rewards is share your story. In share your story, you get to spend time with a big business CEO or a leader. Um, so yeah, I've been Alvin, and I hope you've learned the importance of having a mentor and some practical steps of how to get one. Thank you.